when a Christian reads the New Testament, they see something that is rather peculiar, but is almost glanced over quickly, even though it doesn't quite register with the way they've been conditioned or trained to think. What I'm speaking of is the way the New Testament quotes and handles the Old. It is very obvious that when the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament, it does not do so in a way that is exactly conducive to the standard means of grammatical historical exegesis that the Western Church has practiced since the time of the Protestant Reformation. This is in no sense to attack grammatical historical exegesis. It is simply to point out that the New Testament does not handle the Old Testament the same way. While grammatical historical exegesis is correct and right in what it says, there is definitely the issue of what it doesn't say. How do we account for the manner in which the New Testament handles the Old? How did the apostles handle the scriptures and why? They came from a worldview, what theologians would call the Sitzimleben of Second Temple period Judaism. Jesus and the apostles taught within that context. Although they were at odds with the religious establishment of that day within Judaism, such as the Sanhedrin, they were not culturally removed from the society in which they ministered and taught. The apostles came from that same society. They didn't come from a neutral cultural vacuum. We have to understand the scriptures the way the early Judeo-Christian church did. How did the apostles understand the word of God? Prophecy, particularly. We have a series of teachings in a book called Grain for the Famine and its sequel, More Grain for the Famine, where we present a series of Bible teachings emphasizing the way the early church would have handled the texts. We are warned by the prophet Amos that in the last days there will be a famine for the hearing of the word of God. Well, there certainly is a famine for the hearing of the word of God. Major churches and denominations that were once expositors of Scripture, that they featured expository preaching, where scholarship was emphasized, where theological importance was not understated. These things are in general popular decline within contemporary evangelicism. The Word of God is being taught less and less, emphasized less and less, and it's being correctly expounded less and less. At a time we should be looking at the scriptures in greater depth to prepare for the return of Jesus. Understanding of the word of God is becoming more shallow. Additionally, we are failing to read the scriptures the way the early church did. We are failing to understand why the apostles wrote the scriptures under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as they did, the way the New Testament handles the old. In Grain for the Famine and its sequel, More Grain for the Famine, it is our aim to introduce Christians to this kind of Bible teaching. Let's go back to the beginning. Now, in fairness, there were other times in history when Christians made honest efforts to do this. For all of the mistakes of many of the Puritans, some of the Puritans understood this quite well. We have to go back to the first century church. They grasp the need to do it, at least. This was true of many of the Puritans, although others definitely confined the scriptures to the prism of their Calvinistic presupposition. Others had much more insight and were much more realistic. The early Plymouth Brethren have a bad name because of the errors of John Nelson Darby. But let us not make the mistake of dismissing all that the early Brethren taught. In many respects, the early Brethren had the right approach to understanding the scripture in terms of looking at the scripture the way the early church did. An emphasis on typology that did not base doctrine on type, but certainly used type and typology to illustrate and illuminate doctrine. There have been other Christians at other times in history who have seen this need and understood this reality of the way the New Testament handles the old and appreciated the quest to go back there as something that must essentially happen. But in these last days, it's inescapable. To understand the book of Revelation, to understand the things that Jesus said we need to know to prepare the way for his return, 
It is vital, it is indispensable that we begin to study God's word the way the early church did. For those so inclined, for those interested in this quest, as an introduction to this kind of teaching, and only as an introduction to it, but a good primer and basis, we would certainly recommend you read Grain for the Famine and its sequel, More Grain for the Famine. We've received more letters and emails from more Christians about these books having been used by the Lord in their lives than any of the books we've written up until the present time. That's begun to change now with our later books, but for years, those are the two books that seem to have had the most impact on the most believers who have contacted us. Grain for the Famine and More Grain for the Famine. Again, if you want to begin to understand, begin to understand how the early church understood the scriptures, you're on the right track. Grain for the Famine. There'll be a famine for the hearing of the Word of God.